Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about mathematics, or more specifically, why should you learn mathematics? Now all of us wind up in a math class sooner or later, and some of us don't go gently into that good night. Now why is that? Mathematics has a reputation for being difficult to learn. Uh, I'm not completely sure it needs to be that way, but for a lot of us it is. Mathematics is part of almost every educational curriculum. There must be a reason. What is that? For our purposes, there's basically two reasons to learn mathematics. One, it teaches you to think. Two, it describes almost everything about the physical world around us. Those are both pretty compelling. So let's start with the first one. It teaches you to think. What does that mean? Let's go back to the time of the ancient Greeks. There are seven liberal arts broken up into three, the trivium, and a group of four, the quadrivium. The trivium came first and the quadrivium came second. The trivium consists of grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and the quadrivium consists of arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. Now these are very ancient terms and we interpret them differently now. But in order to be able to participate in the civic life of ancient Greece, you needed to know these things. Now, our modern definition of the liberal arts includes six topics. Arts, philosophy, religious studies, social sciences, mathematics, and the natural sciences. Mathematics is so important, it occupies one of only six positions on this list. If you'd like to think about it this way, mathematics represents a universal language untranslatable and it can't be broken down into anything more basic. It also supports some of the other liberal arts since as far as we can tell the universe works according to mathematical law. Now, I'm hardly the first person to notice this. Quote attributed to Galileo is that the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. More recent scientists have mused on how remarkably useful mathematics is in describing the world around us. All right, the second in my list of the two reasons of why we should study mathematics is that it describes the physical world around us, and it does very, very well. Modern life is hardly possible without mathematics. It's used to describe uh, our communication systems, our transportation systems, economics, finance, weather prediction, Everything you do every day has mathematics built deeply into it. If you want to be part of the modern world, you must learn mathematics. It's not optional. Right? Now, some of us refuse. Okay, you can if you want to. If you decide to, large parts of the world around you are now going to be opaque to you. You can become a user, an end user, but you're going to understand relatively little of what's going on around you. Technological advances are so routine now that we've come to expect them. One of the reasons for this is that we have developed very sophisticated mathematical descriptions of the world around us. And we use those mathematical descriptions, or math models, sometimes they're called, to make predictions, to design new products, to design new processes. Now, I was originally trained as an aerospace engineer, so maybe an aerospace example would work here. This is a picture of the military version of the Boeing 707 airliner that was designed in the late 1950s. Now, this one is designated by the U.S. Air Force as a KC-135, and it's uh, the tanker version of the airliner, so instead of having seats inside of it, it has fuel tanks, and it's used to refuel other airplanes in flight. But it's pretty much identical to the original uh, 707 airliner. When was the last time you went to the airport or maybe saw an airplane fly over and it was doing that? Well, it doesn't happen anymore. How'd that come to be? Well, a couple of reasons. One is that the engines are much, much more efficient. They produce more thrust for the amount of fuel they consume. They burn cleaner so they don't have all that soot pouring out the back of them. And the other reason is that the airframes themselves are better. They're more streamlined. They're lighter, so it takes less power to make them fly than it did back then. Well, how'd that come to be? Math. We used the basic equations that describe airflow, combustion, and structures, 
and combine them into sophisticated software packages that allow us to make better predictions of how the plane will behave in flight and make it more efficient, make it work better, make it cheaper, make it last longer. The result of all that is the airplanes you see in flight now. How about another example? Last week I had a, a job to do on the other side of the state that I live in and I used uh, Google Maps to get me there. Well, what's that? Well, on my phone, my external brain here, a little map pops up that tells me where I am and shows me a map of the area around me. Well, how does that work? Well, the way it finds out where I am is GPS, the Global Positioning System. Mm, how's that work? Well, there's satellites in orbit around the Earth, and there's only one thing basically in the satellite. There's an atomic clock, well, it's a transmitter and some stuff, but the, the important part of it is an atomic clock. And all a GPS satellite does is say, here's what time it is, here's where I am. Here's what time it is, here's where I am. Here's what time it is, here's where I am, over and over and over. When my phone can receive enough of those, it can triangulate and figure out where I am on the surface of the Earth, amazingly accurately, with a few tens of meters. It can tell basically whether I'm on the road or not, or I'm off to the side of the road. Well, that's mathematics, I think. It's even better than that. When the GPS satellites were first launched, there was some debate about whether general relativity had to appear in the equations that describe where you are on Earth. So it was actually launched with a software switch. You could turn it on and off. Well, very quickly they figured out you had to turn it on. So in order to get from here to the, to the other place I was going to a few hours away, I had to use electromagnetism, I had to use all the, the digital math that's in my phone, I had to use orbital mechanics, I had to use general relativity. Okay? All of that is mathematics. Once you think to look, there are other examples you can see just walking down the street. When I walked to lunch today, I saw this. Well, we all know what these are, right? This is a cell tower. This is one near my office. And uh, we could hardly function without these. This is how our cell phones connect to the internet. This is how we make phone calls to one another in text. Well, how does this thing work? Well, math. I don't want to leave you with the impression that you need to be a scientist or an engineer in order to need mathematics. As we've seen, much of modern life depends on mathematics. It depends on mathematical models, and it depends on the predictions those models make. That means all kinds of companies and other organizations work with those results. If you want to help run one of those companies or one of those maybe governmental organizations, you have to understand the mathematics that's at the core of what your organization does. So that even if you're not running code yourself, even if you're not crunching numbers yourself, you need to know enough about uh, the mathematics employed by the people who work for you in order to understand their jobs and in order to make intelligent and responsible decisions about what to do for your organization. So managers, supervisors, executives, investors, board members, all have a vested interest in understanding mathematics and what that mathematics means to the organizations for which they're responsible. This is probably a good place to stop, so let's end here. The next video is going to be a little bit about what mathematics actually is and what it isn't. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.